Hello and welcome to Secure Your Spring Based Application Tutorial. This is section 5 Advanced Security Part 2. In this section, we are going to take a look at user detail service implementations, password encoding, HTTP response headers, and how you can secure that, session management and fixation, authorization architecture, and expression based access control. So, in the first video, we would be talking about user details service implementation. So in this video, what do we need? User transfer object, DAO authentication provider, the custom user details service that you will create and MongoDB. So what is a user details service? We've been talking about user details service from so long. So user details service is an interface which is used throughout by the authentication providers for data access. That means to get user details object from load user by username method of user details service. Now the user detail service returns you an object of user details. So what is that user details and why that is important? So user detail object is required because this is a bridge between the user is stored in your database. That is uh, we say that user transfer object. Okay. To distinguish between the user that your authentication object can understand and the user that is stored in your database. Let's say user detail object would be user and the user that is stored in your database would be user to that is user transfer object. Now to bridge in between these two, you would need user details service that will fetch the user to object from the database and map it to the object of user details, which authentication object can understand. Now, how many types of implementation of user details service provided by Spring Security? One is caching user details manager service, in memory user details manager, JDBC DAO IMPL, JDBC user details manager which extends, JDBC DAO IMPL and LDAP user details manager. So if it's a manager then it have additional functionality like create, update and delete users and if it's a service then it has methods to search user and it returns user details object and there is an LDAP user details service also. Now why do you need a custom user details service when you do have this much implementation of user details service? So if I say if you want to connect to a NoSQL database you would have to create your custom user details service. If you want to let's say change the a database table structure in a way that JDBC DAO IMPL or JDBC user details manager cannot be used. In that case, you would also have to create your user details service custom implementation, right? Now, what I want you to do is to go and download the MongoDB and install it from the MongoDB website. And let's go and see the code. If you go to the Git repository, you will find a project in section 5, video 5.1, Spring Security MongoDB user detail service. So let's go and open up the security config. Now we discussed about the authentication providers. We have DAO authentication provider, which consumes a user details service and it can be used in your configure authentication manager builder method. So the authentication manager builder will consume authentication provider and authentication provider will consume user details service. In here we are using authentication manager builder and authentication provider. We are using DAO authentication provider which is actually consuming the custom user details service implementation. Now let's see what we did in the custom user details service implementation. So we would have to implement user details service first of all this way we are creating the mongodb configuration where your database is residing what is the port what is the database that you want to connect to this is just for the demo purpose you would have you should take it to the root config and externalize the properties into the property file that we used to do in jdbc connections now the host is for 127 that is loopback address the default port and the default data database that we are using here this is related to mongodb if you are new to mongodb you can go and learn about these things 
we are using the server address and we are creating a mongo client object and mongo client object is consumed by mongo template that's it now in the user details which is actually we are looking at load user by username so this has to be an implementation where it is fetching the user to from the database and mapping it to the user details object right so we have a method get users get user to detail so that is our transfer object so let's see what a transfer object looks like is it is just a pojo or a bean which is having the value username password and is it enabled or not and the getter set is along with the constructor that's it so that's how we are representing how our user is stored in a database now how you are going to fetch it so let's go to this method and in this method we are creating mongo operations object which is nothing but just a mongo template object and with this operation object we are querying using find one you can use find or uh, find all this is for only one user because we would be asking or searching for only one user at a time right because if it is logging in so one user at a time is logging in with one thread there could be several multiple request when in a thread there would be only one object that is coming in right so find one and you would have to write new query criteria where user name is username and you would have to specify which class represent your user to right so that's how we represented it it will return a user to object and over here this is returned into the user to object now we are creating a user details object so user details is an interface we discussed and user is actually the implementation of user details by spring security now this user has a constructor which takes the username password and if it is enabled or not and let's see what are other true parameters so let's go to the constructor so it, it actually checks username password is it enabled account is expired credential expired account logged and the collection of authorities that's what it needs so we would have to provide it in the same way so for now we are providing the separate parameter true everywhere and the authorities we are creating as a list you can add your own business logic in here we are just creating the list and using simple granted authority providing the role user and role admin okay now the user details object has been created we would return this user details object that's it so we all we had to do was to implement load users by username method in a way that it reads the object user to object from the database and map it to the user details object that is user now it would be consumed by dao authentication provider and everything will be working okay so if you are new to mongodb we have created if you go to the src test java and we have created a class this is just a class which is actually having the main method so if you run this class as a java application this will connect to the mongodb all you have to do is to install download and install mongodb and start the services the instruction you will find on the github now if you run this class as an uh, java application it will connect to the database on to the default ip port and the default database local it will create two users for you anki daemon password and test and test and it will list all the users and based on the query that you specify now if you want to run the whole project you would have to run it as a on the server not on as a java application this class is to be run execute as java application now i have this application already started now let's log in into the mongodb with the custom user details service anki daemon password and we are successfully logged in let's see how does that look like into our mongodb so this is how you can connect to it once you start the mongo.exe you would have to connect using use local and then you can run db.user2.find and you would have these two object like username and daemon username test and password that's it another thing is if you want to skip spring security filter chain on a particular resource how can you do that you can do using this configure method web security method we actually discussed in section 
that this method should not be overridden unless you want to do some tinkering with the spring security filter chain so that's where it comes in if you want to ignore the spring security filter chain for a particular request you can use web dot ignoring and the request matcher specify what kind of request you want to ignore for from spring security filter chain